Hello and welcome to vmslounge.com. In this video, I want to talk about control and responsibility matrix. Now, this is not a topic for your PMP exam. Don't expect questions in your PMP exam around control and responsibility matrix. But this is a concept that was shared by Seth Godin. And I thought as project managers, this is something that we should all know. Because this is also something, this concept of the control and responsibility matrix is something that can help us in our day-to-day -day job. But here's another thing that you will definitely find in your PMP exam courseware, the power interest grid. This is a matrix that you should know about. I will share a link in the description below to this video. And I just mentioned it here so that you're not confused between the two different types of grids or matrix that we are discussing. So control responsibility matrix, don't expect questions in your PMP exam, but power interest grid, definitely expect questions in your PMP exam. All right, let's talk about this matrix, control and responsibility. And as you can see, there are four quadrants here. First is the martyr. This is someone who does not have control, but has a lot of responsibility. Then there is a leader who has the right mix of control as well as responsibility. You have the whiner who has least responsibility, but a lot of control. And then there is a victim who has negligible responsibility and control. Now, people make choices about their preferences for control and for taking responsibility. This is an important point, which means you and I as project managers can basically choose how much control we would like to have, how much responsibility we would like to take. Of course, if you're working in an environment where your role is very tightly defined and each aspect of your job is documented, then you don't have much room to wiggle here, right? But chances are, as project managers, we rarely work in an environment where our job role is so tightly defined. That means all of us have the opportunity to select the kind of control we would want on our projects as well as the kind of responsibility we are okay to take on our projects. So when you combine these two, the control and the responsibility, you come up with this control and responsibility matrix. Let's talk about each of these quadrant in detail, starting off with the leader, someone who has high control and high responsibility falls in this quadrant, the leader. He is someone who is consistent, generous and powerful. Now, this is the ideal combination. This is where you and I as project managers should aim to be. We should be in control. We should have the authority. At the same time, we should also take responsibility when things go wrong with our projects. So this is going to create a very useful feedback loop because you as someone who falls in this quadrant can actually do something about the problems that are caused when you are working on the projects. So you take responsibility of any issues with your projects. You have total control to make sure that issues do not arise. But if they do, you have the responsibility. And because you also have the control, you have the powers, the authority to make sure that things get back on Track. And that is why you as a project manager should always aim to be in this quadrant. Take as much control of your project as possible. Take as much responsibility of your project as possible. And that is how your team members are going to look at you as a leader of the project. So this is the quadrant all of us as project managers should aim to be in. The next one is the whiner. And this is not where we are supposed to be, right? Someone who has high control, and this is possible as project managers, uh, you may be in a position of control. There are teams, there are companies out there that give a lot of control to their project managers. But 
it is your choice how much responsibility you want to take. So you have a lot of control here, but you don't want to take any responsibility. And this is not a position that you and I should be in. Seth Gordon has named Robert Moses here and I've uh, added a picture of Robert Moses and I looked up who this guy really is. And Robert Moses was actually a builder and he spent nearly a century paving New York while neglecting housing and other social justice issues. But at the same time, he never took the responsibility for any of the effects of his work. That is, he did not take the responsibility of avoiding the housing and the social justice issues that were caused by the projects that he took. So when you have the control on your projects, right, when you are in a position where you have the most control on your projects, you should also take up the responsibility. You cannot be someone like Robert Moses who takes no responsibility of the projects that he works on. People who grab control and avoid responsibility are often easily identified because they spend a lot of time whining. So don't be a whiner. As a project manager, you should not whine. You should take responsibility. That's the whole point of this slide. Moving on, I'd quickly like to remind you we are available on Skillshare. Head over to Skillshare.com slash PNC Lounge for exclusive courses. Okay, let's talk about the Martyr. And this is the quadrant that we are talking about, right? So, he is someone who is kind but who is ineffective because he has zero control. He's taken up a lot of responsibility for sure but he has not taken any control. Low control, high responsibility results in the martyr. Now, these kind of people, they are going to bring huge empathy to the situation. Now, you might think as a project manager with all the stuff that you get to read about being a servant leader, uh, especially if you are working in an agile environment, you might think being kind is good. You know, being able to show empathy is good. Of course, it is good. But at the same time, you need to take the responsibility. If you avoid responsibility, you will be seen as a martyr because you will help people feel seen for sure, but you will not have the power. Now, it is possible that the power is denied to you. And as a project manager who have worked in several companies and have delivered several projects, I would say this is rarely True, because most of the times as project managers, you are not denied power. You are given power for sure. But there are chances that you avoid it. So while you are avoiding power, you are not taking control of the situation. You are responsible for sure, but you're not taking control of the situation. Your willingness to take responsibility is sort of hollow. Now, this is definitely a reason that frontline workers that are required to exert emotional labor and empathy on the job so often burn out. So if you're not a project manager and if you get this opportunity to be a project manager, right? Or if you're a project manager and you, have, you are given this opportunity to become a program manager or the director of PMO and lead a team of project managers, Till now, you might have felt like a frontline worker. And if you are asked to exert emotional labor and empathy on the job, you might feel burned out because you are not taking control of the situation. So be kind for sure, but don't be ineffective or else you will be a martyr. Next in the list is the victim. The victim is someone who has low control, and has low responsibility, right? This is where the victim falls. He or she is someone who is a cock in the system, who is afraid or frustrated, who is either passive, that is he avoids engagement, or is satisfied with the position that he or she is at. So as per Seth Gordon, for most people, 
in most situations we might fall in this trap in this category because even the system pushes us to be cogs to accept whatever that's given in exchange for being let off the hook and not being held responsible for what happens next and this is something that we should all avoid we should take responsibility of what happens next and i would argue that if you want to take responsibility of your projects if you want to take responsibility of what's happening in your project you will eventually want to take control as well so start with responsibility that's the sweet spot to be in so this was the control and responsibility matrix in most of the situations we have the freedom to choose what we want to be where do we want to be amongst all these four quadrants so we can choose a quadrant or we can even choose not to participate in any of this which is definitely a bad choice as a project manager like i said go for the kill go for as much control of your project as possible and go for taking as much responsibility of what happens with your project as possible that's the path to success and that's all that i had in this video i hope you got value out of it like share subscribe if you like our work consider contributing by using the thanks button and don't forget to check out our website pncloud.com your number one free pnp and project management resource thank you and have a nice day